We're gonna go trawling on the outer reef, hopefully catch something. <laughs> This is getting a bit eerie, hey? I'm getting that post-apocalyptic vibe. If you miss the train I'm on You will know that I am gone You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles We set off for Barbuda last week, an island north of here in the Caribbean. Dropping anchor in Koga Bay made me feel like we'd really made it to the Caribbean. Turquoise water, the whitest sand and killer sunsets. I played captain for the day while Riley went spearfishing with George. He didn't catch anything and conveniently enough a new recipe of mine ended up a disaster. It needs a alone. <laughs> Today we plan to go and check out the town of Barbuda and see what was going on after the devastation of Hurricane Irma last year. We're just moving anchorages to over here to where all the people are. Riley and I have been working, smash a few coffees, ready to get some stuff done today. I've actually been recording some music, you'll be pleased to know. Just trying to figure out how to use all this stuff, it ain't easy. It's not my specialty. And Riley's been still going through all that footage. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> So we've just come to the beach here and we've met a lovely man called M1 and he's going to take us for a drive, say hello. Hello. <laughs> We're just going to check out what these guys are doing. They've just uh, got a bunch of supplies from Antigua and they're unloading so I just want to have a look. You're the first person we've seen in yeah. Barbuda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this little ship works as both a ferry and delivers supplies to the island once a week from Antigua. Yeah, that's where I go to school. Have you been here your whole life? Yeah, I've been here most of my life, yeah. The longest I've ever been out of the island is one year. Yeah. Where'd you go? I was in Antigua. <laughs> <laughs> That's far. <laughs> we circumnavigated the island with Imran. Progress on rebuilding after the hurricane was happening, but very slowly. Still, a quarter of the island was without power. Look at you. Aren't you a funny looking goat? Oh, man, <laughs> this is a 40 foot container. We used to work with these offshore. I've seen cranes smash them into all different sorts of things. They do not move. That was blowing from over there where those palm trees are. This is silver, apparently. Ah, okay. I never, ever. So this is the main street. That's the bar. Over here they have like a breakfast station where you just saw the fish and the box of cereal. And yeah, this apparently was and still is the busiest street here in Barbuda, but obviously things have really slowed down. And he was also saying how cruise ships have stopped coming and so many people stopped coming. So yeah, they're in a bit of strife. We scoped out possible options for charity work and we planned to come back once we got a response from either the Red Cross or Samaritan's Purse, the two charities on the ground here. So we just pulled up anchor and we are heading to the eastern side of the island because the wind is swinging around to the west for the next day or two which is super odd for this area but yeah we're hoping to come back around to this side of the island where all the locals are because on the way home uh, Imran stopped off at Samaritan's Purse headquarters and we were able to talk to one of the dudes there and he said yeah they're taking on volunteers and it'd be good if we could come back on Monday or Tuesday to talk to his boss who wasn't there today. At the moment they're rebuilding and starting with the roofs. Um, so yeah, Riles and I might be able to jump up there and help put together someone's roof which would be cool. It's the calmest day today, like absolute glass and there are turtles everywhere but I'm unable to get them on the camera because every time the boat gets close like they do this duck dive and they're, they're gone but We'll there's turtles, we'll there's sweet. turtles everywhere. Just from the chart, you can tell that it's pretty treacherous. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not charted, especially after the hurricane. Like, who knows what's changed there. We'll be coming in very slow. The sun's quite high, it's really calm, which is pretty handy. If I need to, I'll jump in the water and we'll just tuck up and find a nice, very, very protected spot. So I've been up here since we rounded the point 
I've just had it on autopilot and just dodging brown spots basically. And there's a little gap in the reef over here somewhere and we'll end up anchored probably next to our mates, our new mates over here. It's monkey man. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna put the anchor right on. What is he? French? Yeah, he's French. Do we trust him? Yeah, for now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look how he's got one leg crossed over the other. Like he's super chill. So not only have I seen my French mate Olivier flying around the boat, but uh, our neighbours are this young Australian couple who we met in Antigua. They just happen to be anchored next to us, so Riley just burned over and asked if they wanted to come diving for some lobster with us. So that's what's happening. So who have we got here, guys? Katie. And Byron. And Katie brings good luck, apparently. So I'm going to hold you to that one. She's the lobster finder. <laughs> a nurse shark trapped in a large unmarked cray pot that I honestly thought had been lost so I tried to free the shark and grab the crayfish. An hour later we are about to head home empty handed. We bumped into the local fisherman nearby who clearly knew they were there. His name was Danforth, just like the anchor. After a few minutes of struggling to understand our Australian accents, he agreed to come by the boat and sell us some of his catch for a ridiculously cheap price. One, two, three, four. dinner on board La Vagabond for us and for our neighbours. There is honestly an overload of lobster here tonight. You full as a good? I am. Yeah? Because there's pasta as well. Yeah, pasta and so much lobster, like, it's ridiculous. Go by dinner. Mmm, see? There is your lunch. Thank you. And leftover pasta from last night. This is the way life is supposed to be lived, with crayfish. <laughs> This is really good. So we're going to go explore that abandoned, probably abandoned hotel over there. Yeah, well it looks abandoned, but yeah, I guess we'll find out. Mm. There could be people living in there, rebuilding, etc. But we are pretty far from the town, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was still abandoned. Riley lost my favourite water bottle. No! <laughs> Hang on, let me try and swing you. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting a bit eerie, hey? Yeah, it's super eerie. I'm like, getting that like, post-apocalyptic yeah, vibe. It totally where it's, is. Yeah. I'm so unbelievably on edge right now. And I, I don't know why, it just doesn't feel... This doesn't feel right, like... I don't know. It's hard to explain. Ah, oh, would you relax? This is weird. Let's get out. Oh, backgammon. Oh, epic. It's broken. It's a bit broken. I don't know if you should take it. Well, I'd rather fix it up and use it than have it rot here. Yeah, I guess. There's heaps of games here. Butterflies everywhere, Raz. What are you doing? Don't you worry about me, Elena. 
Go and explore that house over there. <laughs> no. No. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that afternoon we caught up with our French mate Mathieu. We were off in search of lobsters for a second time. The water was super murky on the windward side of the island and there was some pretty crazy surge, but we had heard that this would be the best place for trying to find them. I was gonna stay home and edit. <laughs> that was so good. This is the life. This is what we're talking about. So we've got some battered fish. I'm frying up a piece for myself. And we got one half of a crayfish each. That is a blood moon, everyone. Just rising up now. What are we doing, Alana? Riley's convinced me to scrape the hole this morning, so that's what we're doing. We should be able to push up off the floor and yeah, be able to actually apply leverage. Which is a first, so it's going to be interesting. This is what got in my ear in the Galapagos. Having that in your ear is actually extraordinarily painful. <laughs> Guys, we're just going to pick up our friends from the other two boats. Um, they're going to come on board for the day. We're going to go trawling on the outer reef, hopefully catch something, and the boys can jump in the water. That's the plan. So who have we got here? The Media Luna crew, Mathieu. Yeah. Ona is in the back. Ready for, ready for a nice day of sailing around Barbuda. Yeah. Hopefully catching a few fishes along the way. Fingers crossed. That's going to be cool. She's never going to quit, never going to get tired of it. Says it. Someday she starts No, I'm too scared to be hopeful. We're just going for a cruise. If we catch a fish, that'd be nice. Let's go back and look at it. Pressure's on, mate. Right, Pressure's on. Pull the lines in. Pull the lines in. Oh! Pull the lines in. Come on, Dan. Oh! Come on, Can you kick it into gear now? Yep, how's that? For speed. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Nice. Well Woo! Woo! I was not expecting a marlin. No. And you I landed it. Good job everyone. Good job. You a bit tired mate. Big day in the sun, and you haven't drunk in any water. I don't know if I told you, but I caught a marlin. Yeah. Formed a bit of a convoy. We got Matthew hanging back, our Aussie friends getting real close, but they're not going to overtake us. Uh, and we're heading around the corner to the tower to anchor for a few days, and hopefully head into town tomorrow and do some things. A hundred miles. You can heal the whistle.
whistle blow. Tune in next week as we get our hands dirty and really get to know the Barbudans and their story. Yeah.